So, Master, the workers who vanished. How goes the search? They vanished? What's that mean? Just that. Along with ample supplies. I had placed an order. More than a dozen wagons reached the building site, yet five were lost along the way. Tools, food, building materials, and first and foremost, the specialists we need. The chief architect included. I wrote to the architect to say the quarry awaits. He should send new plans. But the foreman said the architect was here, at Ardaizo. And this means... He's missing too. Got it. I'll look around, see what I can learn. Master, I know not how to thank you, but I beg you to hurry. We shall simply not finish without those five wagons. Damn, lots of them. Even bother. What did they hope to steal? Hammers? A hunk of stone? I see. All right. High time I set off. You're gonna make me wait. Thank you, good sir. You would be the famous witcher, would you not? Exactly. I shall hitch my wagon and set off for the monument works at once. They await me there. Shreds. Smashed bones. Damn, it was strong. Deep prints. Blood. Just trying to get away. Hmm. 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 
Come out. I'm not gonna hurt you. Thank you, Sir Witcher. Let Piotr keep you in his care. Witcher. Excuse me, boy. Come on, get up. Saint Lebioda sent you. I must now repair my wagon. They await me at the building site. So long. Missing workers. This is what became of them. to finish the statue like you asked. Master, what would I have done without you? Countless throngs of Lepiota's followers will praise in prayer. And you'll pay me, right? But of course, your reward. The Investor is a serious man of enterprise. Our plan foresees mass conversions. 
With the donations that will follow, we aim to recoup the cost of production in three to five years. Everything has been calculated, you see, down to the last decimal. Hmm. Good luck then. Farewell. Got good news, madam. As do I. Francois has returned. We marry in a week's time. <laughs> Prenuptial teachings at the temple tomorrow. Dress fitting the next morn, then a tour of the wedding venue. I have never been so happy. Congratulations, I guess. Wish you happiness, both of you. And good fortune to you on your path. Your reward, Master. And Godspeed. There you are. A pleasure to see you again. The Skellige faction. How do you find it? It's great. Faction's a pleasure to play. I'm glad to hear it. Any specific tournament rules? Mind giving me an overview? Firstly, might I introduce the contestants? Superb Gwent players all, hailing from the world's farthest corners. Hamal Ochen Dankbali, an Ofieri merchant. Eric van Frog, a patrician from Novigrad. And lastly, we are proud to welcome a Skelliger. Ye blind? Not Skelliger, Skelligirl, damn it! Naturally, no offense meant. Agnetha Scott, her effort charming isle temperament in evidence, along with assorted beats, baubles, ropes. As to the rules, they're simple. Each player adopts a faction they cannot change for the tourney's duration. Lose a match, and you're eliminated. The winner from among you shall advance to the semi final to face the winner of the tourney's previous edition, His Excellency the Ambassador of the Empire of Nilfgaard. Master von Hin. The winner of that match shall in turn face none other than me, your humble servant. Hand off our Gwent! No new fucking factions! Protesters have gathered outside. Quite a few, it seems. Hands off our bloody game! We didn't want any new factions! Money, you dozy cunt! Stop doubling with dwarven tradition! Change cannot always please everyone. Gwent traditionalists resent my efforts to expand the canon to include Skellige, but we shall pay them no mind. Mind telling me what factions the others will be playing? It is no secret. Eric van Frog will play the Northern Realms. His Excellency, in a flush of patriotism, chose Nilfgaard. Hamal Ochendangbali will play the Monster's deck, and Agnetha Skold has chosen Skoyatel. Yours truly, of course, shall await the winner with a Skellige deck. I'm determined to prove its value. Ready to start if everybody else is. I invite you to join me on the terrace. The Herald shall soon announce the tourney's start. Let the tourney begin! In round one, Agnetha Skult faces Eric von Vrog, and Geralt of Rivia plays Hamal on Gangbali. Let's grab a table. A wager would you wish to make? What did you have in mind? Weapons do I collect, and your sword of silver my eye has caught. Should I win, I should take it. Should I lose, to you another equally precious shall I give. So be it. Good match. Thanks. And upon your victory, congratulate I you. What drove me to wager a sword against you know I not. Clearly to guide me, the universe ceased. Here, you may it serve well. I'd never have lost if you hadn't cheated. And my land, folk who slander like that don't live long, because we don't let them. Accuse me of cheating again, and I'll cut your tongue out. Enough. Hands to yourselves. As Gwent is a gentleman's sport, we expect all its players to demonstrate impeccable manners, and we cannot tolerate any disturbances. 
Thus, by decision of Count Monier, the contestants from Novikrat and Skellige are hereby disqualified. Gentlemen, sport. Well, I'm a lady, and we ladies don't give a flying fart about a tourney where any measly prick can accuse us of cheating. With round one completed, the standings are as follows. Agnetha Skolt and Eric Van Vrog both disqualified. Geralt of Rivia has defeated Hamel Ong Denbali of Ophir. In the semi-final, Geralt shall face the defending champion, Ambassador Von Hin. I am honored. Your Excellency, a pure pleasure to play you. The pleasure was mutual, I assure you. Congratulations, Witcher. Stop desecrating Gwent! Get in it all, new factions! Seems there's some trouble brewing. Scoot, Olius! Off your asses and hide to Skellige! Yeah, I love it, seal slappers! Please remain calm and stop the verbal attacks. Stop your mum from fucking ferrets, Monier! And hands off our Gwent! Maybe instead of hollering threats, you ought to just explain what it is you want. We've said it plenty of times, yet no one ever listens! Got me listening. Gwent's an ancient pastime. Its rules were set ages ago. Exactly. Determined in keeping with the laws of nature. There should be four factions. That is the optimal number. We'll not tolerate the introduction of any others. It would disgrace the tradition. Aye, leave our Gwent the fuck alone. Enough of this! Didn't come here to Java but to break fucking heads in defense of tradition! Come on, lads! Off a bit. Fuck. Seeing triple. Uh, quadruple, even. Enough! I shall summon the guard! I got this count. Sure, you can shut this tournament down, but there'll be another, with who knows what new rules. If you don't like them, don't enter. Play somewhere else, however you want, but you'll never stop other folk from playing however they like. Bollocks! Like my good friend Zoltan Chive says, if one says you're talking bollocks, they could be right, they could be wrong. But if multiples say you're talking bollocks, well, you probably are. So let's take a vote. Who else here thinks I'm full of it? Zoltan Chive? Haven't seen that rascal in ages. How's he doing? Was in Novigrad last I saw him. Be glad to tell you more over a flask of something strong. Attention, everyone! Our outing's taken a new turn. We're to sit and drink vodka with Sultan's pal. Gentlemen, wait. We've still the final round of the tourney to play. Final? Fuck that! I, Yaki Raffiberg, to hereby declare my participation in this tournament. And I demand to play the victor. We'll settle whether this Skellige faction's worth a flaming bag of shit once and for all. Agreed, but please, show some patience. We must first play a pre-final. In the, uh, pre-final, Count Monier, representing the Skellige faction, shall face Geralt of Rivia, also playing with a Skellige deck. My brother's dream has come true. Skellige in the final, and played by both contestants. Good luck. Congratulations! The best man has won, playing the best faction to boot. Thanks. Good game. 
Skellige one. What a bundle of pish. Tournament's not done. No, at my time. That is what we agree. Let us resolve our differences here and now. Now to determine the ultimate victor. Geralt of Rivia, playing the Skellige faction, shall face Yaki Raffiberg, playing... Skyatel! Let the better man, or dwarf, win! Thanks. Good game. All our blisters! What hurts most is fucking Skellige one! But as they say, tough shit! Congrats! Come on, lads! Let's get soused! No, you must stay, for I wish to treat you all to a tickle. We must toast the premier of the new faction. And if anyone wishes to play a friendly match with Gwent, I see no reason why not. Thank you for everything, Witcher. No problem. Had fun. You proved yourself a true Gwent master. Here, the grand prize. You earned it. Thank you very much, Count. Thank you once more for deigning to take part in my little tournament. I hope we shall meet again. Who knows? Farewell. For four generations? That is how long my family has been producing wine? Producing Plonk unfit to drink, you mean? Which is exactly why you should sell Belgat to me, not him. <clears throat> As a ducal clerk, I must look after the duchy's best interests. Belgar currently belongs to the Treasury. The Minister of the Treasury has clearly expressed his desire that Belgard be handed over to a responsible steward. Yet, diverse troubles beset both your present holdings. Until you resolve them and thus prove yourselves competent, selling Belgard to either of you is out of the question. Well, happy? This is your fault! Mine? You're deranged, woman. Hark! Good folk! Be it known, Matilda de Vermentino is a cursed, spiteful lunatic! Doesn't look cursed to me. Just really, really angry. Ticked her off quite a bit, you have. Truly? How would you know? A shrew tamer, are you? A witcher. So no expert, I guess. But it doesn't take an expert to see when a woman's angry. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you speak the truth, brother. Wait, did you say Witcher? Not seeking work, are you? Y you see, I wish to buy a vineyard. Belgard. Yet that bloody bureaucrat's not likely to sell it to me until I settle my troubles at home, at Coronata. What kind of troubles we talking about? Ah. Uh. It's botched in more ways than one. The herbarium, infested with monsters. My steward, gone missing, with an entire transport of wine. And someone's abducted my herbalist. A lot of bad luck for one little vineyard. If you ask me, it's that Matilda, her handiwork. A sugar sweet face, a temper sharp as horseradish. So will you help? Sure sounds like work for a witcher. Yeah, I'll help. I am really, truly grateful. Thank you. My vineyard lies east of here. You're sure to find it. Now forgive me. I must talk to that quill pusher. I might win him over yet. You're a witcher, yes? I heard you talking to that oafish ogre, Liam. Disgusting man. The worst sort. First, seduces with a dashing gaze, the fair face, then reveals a coal-black heart. But that's all beside the point. 
I stopped you because I want to buy Belgat too. Alas, things are rotten at my own vineyard, Vermentino. Hmm. Strange coincidence. No coincidence. I am certain Liam's thrown a stick in my spokes. Several sticks. My cooper and blacksmith both have mysteriously vanished. Man-eating plants have sprouted on my paths, and strange things are afoot on Pheasant Hill. Ah, the list goes on, but the crux is one. I must solve my problems at Vermentino if I'm to stand any chance of acquiring Belgart. Would you help me before you help Liam? I'm willing to pay more than he's offered you. I can help. Please try. Wonderful. You've no idea how much that means to me. My vineyard lies due west. I shall stay here for a time. I must make certain Liam does not pull some stunt while my back is turned. Gotcha. Farewell. All is in order. Self didn't kill him, bled to death afterwards. Hmm, what have we got here? No chance this letter wound up here by accident. Notes clear. Someone's out to sabotage Coronada. Shame I don't know who. Though I could still find out if I keep looking. This no place Looks like, like I this. Found earlier. Well, it'd be interesting. Some parties causing problems at the vineyards. Need to find the spot the letter mentions. Then I'll find something mighty interesting behind whatever door this key opens. Generate to cultivate something like this. We can incinerate them. Ah! Master Witcher, have you any news? One and the same man caused Coronada's and Vermentino's problems. Got proof. A certain Count Crespi. He's at the root of it all. What, Crespi? Belgard's erstwhile owner? Why, that's impossible. Got it all here, in writing. He did, indeed, have motive. He knew well his own vineyard could not survive if Vermentino and Coronata were to join forces. Probably why he incited the feud. Pulled it off, too, mostly. Just failed to bring his plan to completion when the beast got him. Incredible. You mean to say it's... It wasn't Liam. And I was certain my troubles were Matilda's doing. <clears throat> In light of new evidence, uh, the most just resolution would be for both injured parties to share oversight of Belgard. Wait just a minute. Do you mean to suggest we're to cooperate? It's the optimal solution, yes. 
in terms of the health of the Enterprise as well? Hmm. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I do believe he's right. Perhaps it is time to bury the hatchet. Three vineyards are more than one. There's much to be gained. So be it. That's not all. The troubles at your vineyards? Solve them. You can go back to operating normally now. Splendid news. I'm relieved to see you hired a professional, especially one whose aid might still prove invaluable. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Follow me. It's high time you saw Belgard. Witcher, come with us, please. Something tells me we'll have tasks for you yet. All right, let's go. <clears throat> My desire for Belgard to pass into capable hands was no idle whim. For the vineyards fallen upon hard time, I've been told of workers dying on their rounds, monsters prowling about. Before anyone can call this home, they will have to deal with these uh, inconveniences. That is the minister's wish. More work for me, I guess. If you're willing, we'll gladly accept your help. More or less already agreed, I guess. Oh, that's a weight off my chest, I must say. Your reward shall be fair, I promise. I'll get to work. Tended to Belgard's problems. Vineyard should be in as good a shape as ever. Splendid. And thus, officially, by the power vested in me, I grant you title to the Belgard Vineyard, and trust that you shall make good use of its grounds and resources. Excellent. Ah. I can already smell the grapes ripening in the sun. We shan't forget what you did for us. Here, your pay. But that's not all. You must come back and see us shortly. We've a surprise in store for you. I'll do that. Farewell. Greetings. Geralt! There you are! So, our painting. Are you pleased? Is it to your liking? Do tell! <laughs> it's... nice. Shows a lot of, uh, imagination. Don't recall undressing before posing, though. Some of the other details are a bit off, too. Well, the imagination is an artist's chief, too. Heard the same from a certain poet. He embellishes and invents chiefly. Perhaps you'd care to buy the painting. Given our rapport, I shall take a loss. For you, I'll part with it, I will, at a special price. Why not? It'll make an interesting memento. Though I'd hardly call the price a bargain. <laughs> Indeed. Few have the sophistication to appreciate my technique. I sometimes go hungry as a consequence. Mm, all right. At least this way I'll be able to control who sees it. Thanks. What is it? Got your coin, sir. And a wee gift to thank you for the trust you showed. This blade's the Reckoner. It saved my arse a fair number of times. Thanks, Chanfinelli. We'll call it even. One last thing. I'd like to apologize for the whole minging kerfuffle. Renovations coming along all right? I am delighted to inform you we have completed our labors. You can now devote yourself to enjoying the vineyard's delights to the fullest. You must forgive me my temerity, sir, but I thought, with all the work on Corfo Bianco completed, and with the estate looking more beautiful than ever, it might be appropriate to commemorate the moment. Sure, why not? During the tidying that preceded the renovations, I came across a bottle of Sapramento. 
the 1250 vintage. I cannot say by what miracle it survived, but it is here. And we've course to open it today. And then he ran straight into the crowd, burning bouquet in hand. All thought it a part of the performance, so they only laughed, even when the decor began to catch fire. It was not until the flames engulfed Baron Mahefkin's beard that folk began to realize something was amiss and went to put out the fires. <laughs> Sounds like Monsieur Bolius and Madame Nina threw some first-rate balls here. It was so. In this regard, Baron Rossell was decidedly more reserved. So tell me, Barnabas Basil, what's the wine situation like here? Am I going to produce any this year? This year is out, I fear, sir. Last autumn, a fungus destroyed all the vines. Baron Rossell had new ones planted, but it will be some time before they start bearing fruit. Assuming that is, the fungus does not reappear. Hmm, that'd be bad. This sepramento got me dreaming. It's amazing. Isn't it, though? Allow me to top you off, sir. There. Thanks. Hey, happen to know how the hell I can walk on that water? Naturally, I know. Since time immemorial have I dwelt in solitude on this shore, and I can testify to the extraordinary nature of the lake. What's so extraordinary about it? I mean, besides the fact that you can walk on its surface. A sword, most wondrous, lies in its depths. I watch over it. The blade may be grasped solely by one who possesses the five chivalric virtues. Folk call me a lot of things, but virtuous? I don't know. Yet I do know, for I know who you are. You are a man of honor, as many can attest. Of humble means yourself. You show generosity to others. Your valor is the stuff of legends. Reason guides your actions, as it does those of all who are wise. To acquire the sword, you must first convince me you are worthy. The inscriptions on the stones describe the five virtues. Valor, honor, wisdom, sympathy, and generosity. During your time in Tucson, you can prove these virtues dwell in your heart. In this world, there are many in need. They will help you prove your chivalry. 